Hi everyone, I'm Alistair Ben, and this is Expressive Photography. Thanks for tuning in once again. This week, I want to talk about how to be a happy photographer. Now, instead of talking about images and talking about composition and talking about all these different things this week, what I want to do is talk about the evolution of photography, why we do it, what we're trying to achieve, um, how we feel when we're doing it. And for me, happiness is, is a good thing in life. Feeling happy, feeling content, feeling as if what we're doing is exactly what we want to be doing. And photography is a metaphor. And I think where I got to last week was I was quite judgmental. Maybe, maybe I try not to be judgmental, but it can, it can come across as being very black and white. And so for me, what I've decided to do this week is say, well, I, I'm a happy photographer. I'm totally at one with my, my work and the type of images that I make and who I am in the landscape and I don't feel under pressure and I don't feel judged and I don't feel the need for external validation. So all of these attributes make me happy and that has not always been the case. When I started in photography, uh, way, way back when in my teenage years, I had a little Olympus uh, OM-1 or something it was, a little film camera. Um, I would go out into the landscape pointing my camera at things I loved reflections in puddles, clouds skimming over, over mountains, uh, interesting light, you know, anything that caught my eye. And I wasn't thinking particularly about sharing those images. You end up with slides and yes, occasionally I'd show them to family or friends or whatever, but it was a very innocent pastime. I didn't know any rules. I didn't know any techniques. Uh, I didn't have any filters. I don't even believe I had a tripod. I was literally just out in the landscape with a camera and I was a happy photographer at the age of 13 or 14. And what happened when I got back into photography in my 30s, uh, so 20 years ago, um, I did the same thing. I would go out into the landscape, but I was photographing birds. So I would photograph, you know, beautiful birds or interesting birds or, or rare birds, uh, mostly in the Far East where I was living at the time, but also spending months in the US and Canada and photographing birds there. And I was happy. I was totally happy. The passion of being out in the world, engaging with something, pointing my camera at something and the challenge of the technical capture, you know, sharp, in focus, uh, well exposed, those craft-like elements gave me a satisfaction. I was a happy photographer. And then the internet happened and all of a sudden, posting our images online, external validation, peer pressure, and this explosion of the number of images and photographers out there in the world, all of a sudden, you're a very, very small dot in a massive galaxy or a massive universe. And my perspectives changed. And I think I, I, I set out my stall, you know, my mission statement wasn't to be a happy photographer anymore uh, because I wasn't consciously a happy photographer. I was just a photographer who was happy. Um, Whereas I think my mission statement became to be a popular photographer, to be a world renowned photographer, uh, to be an innovator, to be someone who was pushing the craft forward. Um, and, you know, I became part of a peer group that, that did some of those things. Um, and then I did all this studying and learned all these compositional conventions, shall we call them, um, and understood how to make images that would A, be popular, and B, would be perceived as being good, whatever that means. Now, 
I know for a fact, and I'm, you know me on this channel, I'm super honest, I'm very direct, and I'm, I'm willing to bear uh, my failures as much as I'm lauding my own successes. Um, I, I didn't get happy. I know that I hit the wall sometime in probably 2014, 2015, where the whole thing had lost all of its pleasure for me making images that were popular, making images that were conventionally, aesthetically pleasing, all of those types of things. I didn't feel like I was me anymore. I just felt like I was just another guy going through the numbers and producing a body of work that people would say, yeah, he's a good photographer. Now, I read a lot of comments on last week's video and there was hundreds of them. And because I was away for a few days, I had to answer them all yesterday because I try to answer all of your questions and comments because I really appreciate them. And reading through a lot of these comments, I was reading really open, uh, heartfelt comments by people who were saying things like, oh yeah, you know, judges at my camera club tell me that successful photographs can be identified by the number of rules that they adhere to. Um, and that just horrifies me. You know, if you go out and make something that you love, and we do it, I mean, we do it all the time. If you personally, and, and what I want to do today is, let's look at the logic of this thing that we do, this thing with cameras that we do. I'm a happy photographer, totally happy. And at the beginning of this video, I, I explained some of the reasons why. If I go out into the landscape and do something that I love, I'm there, I'm engaging with the world, I'm, I'm seeing something that captivates me and, and sparks my imagination and sucks me in and gets me in a flow state and I'm in, I'm in nature and I'm listening to the birds and I'm, I'm looking at the way the light is interacting with whatever it may be. It can be the reflections of a surface of a river or it can be a big pointy mountain with a beautiful lenticular cloud at sunset over the top of it. It doesn't matter what you're pointing your camera at. If you're engaged with that and you're loving that thing that you're engaging with and you make a photograph that you love, then that in itself is a beautiful thing. Yeah, The fact that you've had those experiences and have produced something that you personally love, you would print, you would stick on your wall. That is a very self-contained experience. Yeah, It's totally self-satisfying, self-actualizing. Now, if you then put that image online and it's super popular for whatever reason, you may get a subsidiary wave of dopamine that comes from that adulation of other people. Or the converse can happen that you get hate on the internet where people say, that's rubbish, that sucks. What do you point your camera at that for? It's not sharp, it's not in focus, it's not exposed properly, it's too dark, it's too blue, the colors are all wrong. Why didn't you take a step to the left? Why didn't you take a step to the right? Why is the horizon not level? Why is this, why is that? <clears throat> and you get all this hate, then all of a sudden you start to look at this thing with different eyes because all of a sudden this human condition kicks in where doubt creeps in. And all of a sudden the external opinion is stronger than your own opinion. And I think that's sad. You know, I, I really think it's sad that external opinion can change our love of something. Now I've got a bunch of guitars behind me and I play every day. And while we were, Anne Christine and I were talking about this video and what we were going to do today, I picked up a guitar and started noodling away. And just out of spontaneity, some little riffs and things started to come through my fingers. You know, and Anne and I were just both smiling at each other because it was just these little spontaneous moments of creativity. Now, there was no structure to it. There was no, it was just a moment of joy of expressing myself with the strings of a guitar. And Anne's smile was a kind of nice feedback moment. But we can do this, this, this whole judgment thing. And this is where I got to last week was saying that 
if we never learned the rules at all, you know, if rules didn't exist, and if we can imagine a world where that is the case, if the rules didn't exist and all we had was going into the landscape, seeing something that we loved, pointing our cameras at it and producing something that we personally adored, I think the world would be a happier place and I think everyone would be a happier photographer. Now, I believe that since 10,500 people follow this channel, that there's a growing need for people to find something else in photography other than do it this way and make images this way how to make pretty photographs, how to make photographs that are universally looked on as good, how to guarantee peer approval. You know, there's hundreds of channels on YouTube that teach you that. So I kind of figure that you're watching this one because you're looking for something different. And I can guarantee you that as I move forward with this channel, my aim is to question all of the things that everybody else is teaching and basically saying, logically, if we break it down, is that going to free you? Is it going to make you happy? Is it going to make you the person you want to be? Now, if you want to be the same as everybody else, and if you want to make photographs that are uh, acceptably aesthetic, then fine you're totally at liberty to do that. It's your life, it's your time, it's your energy, uh, it's your commitment to finances and travel and uh, putting yourself out there on the internet or wherever it is you share your images, if it's through a camera club uh, or just even with friends and family. As soon as you put your images out there, they're going to be received, judged, uh, compared to other images. And I'm just saying that on this channel from now on and in all the learning material I produce in my eBooks and videos, everything is going to be focused on you having a better quality of life, me having a better quality of life. I create because it makes me happy. I create because it allows me to express both conscious and subconscious emotions. It allows my perspective on the world, the full spectrum, of my perspective, from the dark times to the light times, from the happy times to the sad times, from the positive to the negative. Um, I have a very broad uh, perspective on the world and I want to use my art, use my creativity to express and exercise the demons and celebrate the angels and the joy. If that is what you're looking for, then this channel is where you want to be. I will very, very rarely tell you anything that's do it this way, uh, if, ev if ever, uh, because it's not what I'm interested in doing. So I know today's video is a little bit focused on a bit of a rant to camera again, but this stuff needs to be said. If someone had taken me to, to one side 20 years ago and said, there's two paths in front of you, that sounds like a Led Zeppelin song, there are two paths you can go by. Um, if, if you choose the path that everybody else is walking and learn everything that everybody else is learning and go to the same places that everybody else is going, then being you becomes quite a problem, yeah? Because you are on your own path. You start life on your own path and we choose our own path. Every single decision that we make on a daily basis changes the path that we're on. And you're never too late. I got some beautiful comments from people in their 60s, 70s, 80s this week. People who say they've been photographing for 30 and 40 years who are suddenly feeling liberated and free to create what they want to create. Now, that is brilliant. And if everyone was an open vessel, an empty vessel, free of any rules, conventions, and societal standards and judgment, I personally think everyone would be a kind of happier person. So thank you very much again for tolerating my uh, my 
my uh, my kind of ranting uh, talk to camera type thing. Um, that little join button in the bottom has been very popular uh, and I truly appreciate everybody who's clicking the join button and making a contribution to this channel on a monthly basis now. Uh, there will be videos coming along next week uh, which are specifically for that and we're exploring some of these topics in depth and it's going to be a way to create a community of expressive photographers who have the means to really support the channel. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for that. For those of you who are looking to dig into these things again, please check out Luminosity and Contrast because that is my kind of statement of intent as to how we can see the world in a very liberating way. And it's going to be the foundation on future books. Next week, I'm getting back to writing my the Colour of Meaning book, which has been on, on ice for a couple of months while I've been doing other things. So next week, we're getting back into that. And um, yeah, that's it. Next week, uh, Wednesday of the week coming, I have the total pleasure of talking with Julia Anna Gospadaro, uh, who is an incredible Greek uh, landscape and architectural photographer. She's probably best known for her architectural work, which is just stunning. We've just bought one of her prints, which is utterly incredible. Uh, so she's on Vision and Light on Wednesday and we have over an hour of a conversation uh, because as we're doing less of them, I'm making them a bit longer. Some very interesting people coming on the channel over the next month or so. I'm going to keep that a secret for now, but yeah, some, some interesting folks coming up as well. So join me on Wednesday for my chat with Julia Anna. And of course, we'll be back again next Sunday with another video where we'll be looking at some images and maybe doing some analysis of some images and seeing, well, why do, why do I think this works and the consequences of composition. Compositional consequences is where it's at. So we'll be covering that more in the future. Thanks very much for watching everyone. Stay safe, be good, enjoy your summer, and I hope you're, uh, you become happy photographers.